for the entrance let us take hymn number 255 on page 80 mighty one has come and kingship is in his grasp and power and dominion in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and be with your, with your spirit. spirit good morning my dear sisters and brothers and welcome to this eucharistic celebration today we celebrate the feast of the epiphany of the lord where the lord manifests himself to us and we pray for this grace that we come and adore the lord and we see the presence of god in our lives dear brothers and sisters on this joyous feast of the epiphany we gather to celebrate the manifestation of the son of god to the world We remember the visit of the Magi, who followed the star to pay homage to the newborn King, recognizing the divine light that shines in the humblest of places. Today, we are reminded of the boundless love of our Creator and the transformative power of the Word made flesh. May this Mass be a source of inspiration, renewal, and communion as we offer our praises and thanksgiving. to god's love and mercy in our lives let us take these sentiments to our heart and pray for god's grace in our lives and my dear sisters and brothers let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries i confess i to almighty god, god. And, and to all you, my, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in, and in my words, in what, what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my, my faults, through my, through my faults, through my, my most grievous faults. faults. Therefore, Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. in the highest and, and on earth peace, peace to people, people of good will we, we praise you we bless you we, we adore you we glorify you we, glorify you. we give you thanks, thanks for your great glory lord god, lord god heavenly king, king o god, god almighty, almighty father, father lord, lord jesus christ only begotten son lord god lamb of god son of the father you take away the sins of the world Have mercy on us. You do take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
have mercy on us. For you, For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who already by faith know you, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah 61-6. to Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you, and nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see, they all gather together, they come to you, your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. The young camels of Median and Ephah, all those from Sheba, shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our response will be, All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. Kindly repeat. All, All nations, nations on earth shall, shall fall, fall prostrate, prostrate before, before you, you, O Lord. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. Our response? All, All nations, nations on earth shall, shall fall, fall prostrate, prostrate before you, before you, you o, o Lord. Lord. In his days shall justice flourish, and great peace till the moon is no more. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the river to the bounds of the earth. Our response? All, All, nations, nations, All nations shall, shall fall, fall prostrate, prostrate before, before you, you, O Lord. O Lord. The kings of Tarnish and the islands shall pay his tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations shall serve him. Our response? All, all nations, nations shall, shall fall prostrate, prostrate before, before you, you O Lord. Lord. O Lord. For he shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy, and save the lives of the needy. Our response? All, All nations, nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, I assume that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, which was not made known to the sons of man in other generations, as it is now made revealed, to his apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. 
the word of the lord thanks be thanks to god thanks be to god kindly rise star when it rose and have come to worship the lord hallelujah 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 The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, "Where is he who has been born king of the Jews?" for we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him when herod the king heard this he was troubled and all jerusalem with him and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people he inquired of them where the christ was to be born they told him in bethlehem of judea For so it is written by the prophet And you O Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared and he sent them to bethlehem saying go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him bring me word that i too may come and worship him after listening to the king they went on their way and behold the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was when they saw the star they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy and going into the house they saw the child with mary his mother and they fell down and worshiped him then opening their treasures they offered him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh and being warned in a dream not to return to herod they departed to their own country by another way the gospel of the lord praise, praise to you lord, lord jesus christ my dear sisters and brothers this morning we celebrate the feast of the epiphany of our lord and in a way this feast brings to a close the christmas season it brings to a close this christmas season for some of us and this is really the feast is not really the feast of the three kings as we popularly sometimes call it because of how we celebrate it but it is the epiphany of the lord and that is what we try to stress this morning and what does the epiphany mean in that sense the epiphany means the appearance or the manifestation or the making presence or how god makes himself or herself present in our lives and we see not just this one epiphany we don't celebrate just this one singular epiphany of the lord to the magi but there are a series of epiphanies that happen for example the epiphany of the angels in which they reveal christ to the shepherds 
Today's Gospel reading is about the Epiphany to the Magi, to these wise men. And this is what the Western Church celebrates, right? The Roman Catholic Church, the Latin Church, of what we celebrate. And the Eastern branch of the Catholic Church, for example, also celebrates the Epiphany, like us, but they celebrate the Epiphany at the baptism of the Lord, where also Christ is revealed, where God the Father and the Holy Spirit reveal Christ as the Son of God, as the Holy One, Chosen One of God. And so, also later on, this goes on. At Cana, also, you find that the divinity of Christ is revealed in, for example, in that miracle that he makes where he blesses water into wine, and for the first time, he reveals himself. And throughout the Gospel, you have these series of epiphanies that take place. But today for us, for our contemplation, is this epiphany we contemplate on this one where the Magi visit Jesus, and Jesus reveals himself as the Messiah, as the Savior of the world. So who are these wise men? This story, for example, occurs principally in the Gospel of Matthew. We don't hear the story in the other Gospels. We don't hear this in Luke, for example, that the epiphany is with the shepherds as the poor. And we can see over here in terms of there's a contrast in terms of why these Gospels were written and for whom the Gospels were written. And that tells you why, for example, Matthew chooses to tell us about the Magi. If you look at the Gospel of Luke, which probably you, all, you also heard at Christmas time, depends on which Mass you attended, you hear the Gospel of Matthew at night or you hear the, the Gospel of Luke at, in the morning. So the Gospel of Luke, Luke primarily focuses on the poor and it reveals Jesus' mission to the poor, to the downtrodden, to the afflicted. And here, Jesus' mission, in a way, his manifestation happens to the poor, to the lowly, to the shepherds. They also he manifests himself. And here, Matthew, in a way, chooses the Magi. And what is Matthew interested in? Why are the Magi chosen? Because Matthew's concern about proclaiming Jesus, he is primarily proclaiming this to the Jews, to the community of the Jews. And therefore, you find a lot of Jewish traditions also mentioned also in the Gospel of Matthew. But he is also concerned with not just the Jews, but also extending it to the Gentiles who stay around and not yet believe in Christ. And so this Gospel also extends to them. And the Magi today that we hear are in that sense of what in the old world we considered pagans or Gentiles, and who come then to visit Jesus, and Jesus presents himself to this. In a way, by presenting himself to the Magi, to the Gentiles, Jesus is presenting himself as the Savior of the world to the entire world. And you will hear this also, this message of the Epiphany that takes place right at the start where Jesus presents himself, also in a way closes when Matthew, at Matthew's Gospel in the end, when Jesus gives this instruction to his disciples, where he tells him, go and proclaim my gospel, my good news, to all the world and tell them who I am. And that is what is about the gospel of Matthew, about proclaiming Jesus to the entire world. We see in today's gospel that you have, we, hear, we know very little, for example, about who the Magi are. Sometimes we call them the three kings, we call them the wise men, but sometimes scripture callers also tell us that they could be astrologers because of the way they interpreted the sign, they interpreted the star, and how they traveled. And also, we hear also about that they come over there. The, the gospel doesn't mention to us the names of these kings, but tradition, we, we also use a lot of tradition, and then we hear that their names are Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, for example. And those are names that are ascribed to them. And what is the center over here in the gospel is about the three gifts that they bring. So they bring these three little gifts. And they bring these gifts of gold, of frankincense, and myrrh. We also think that these gifts reveal something about Jesus in a way that these gifts are Christological. And what are the meanings of this, of gold? In the gold, in a way, it's representative of Jesus' kingship, that Jesus is king, that he was king of the Jews. And that is the gold that is offered to him. And frankincense, which is used for incensing, which we also use today, is 
uh, is an attribute of his divinity, of who Jesus is, of, his, of how it was used in the temple and how it presents himself. And myrrh, which is then used for his burial, talks about Jesus' humanity, but also talks about his passion. And these are the gifts. These gifts also, these very small elements that are brought by the, by the wise men, also reveal in that sense about who Jesus is to us. But today's gospel, it teaches us about how Christ, in a way, it enriches all those who come to worship him. And here today, at, at the crib, when you look at Jesus in the crib, and we go to go to pay him homage, or we go to worship him, or we pay reverence to him, or we go to pray to him. It is our encounter with Christ over here that happens. And this is in this realm of encounter that we meet Christ, and Christ then blesses us. He blesses us with who we are. We present ourselves, and then he blesses us in this encounter, and then he sends, him, sends us away. This takes place all the time also. For example, when you come here for Mass, you come for a manifestation of Christ during Mass. You come to encounter Christ in this Eucharist. Just like, you would, just like the kings went to encounter Jesus. You come over here. You come with who you are. You come here in the presence of Christ at the sacrament. You encounter him. You consume him in that sense. And then you take Christ into the world. You take the mission of Christ to represent Christ in the world. That is what the Magi do. And then also you see that how this Eucharist is also in a way a kind of a manifestation of Christ where we come to encounter Jesus. Today's gospel, for example, gives us this very rich understanding of Christ and our encounter. But also, for example, the gospel also is a fulfillment of the first reading that we hear, this oracle of the prophet Isaiah, where we were told about how God, how all the nations in the world would come to worship the Lord. And Isaiah particularly mentions in terms of how the nations would come with gold and incense. We heard this in the first reading. Also, the response tells us something. It tells us that all the kings from the foreign countries would come to pay homage to the just king because his, his rule was meant to bring justice to the people, especially at a time when Palestine at that time was also going under occupation, just like Palestine today is under occupation, was also under occupation at that time from the Romans. And then we also hear, for example, from, from, the, from the second reading, from Paul's letter to the Ephesus, where Paul stresses on God's secret plan, of God's secret plan, not just for the Jews who were the chosen ones. Paul stresses this very much, that God's message is also for the Gentiles. It is for the world. It is for everyone. And this Paul makes very explicit. He says the Gentiles are co-heirs, co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. And therefore, it in a way tells us, in a sense, if we are to reflect, if we think that as people who are Christians, who practice and who come for Mass, over here, and we practice our religion, we believe in God. If God can also choose pagans, can choose Gentiles, he chooses us much more in spite of who we are. That God also welcomes us. That God chooses everyone, but also chooses us in a very special way. In all these enactments, my dear sisters and brothers, that we would have today, for example, in the cribs today, for example, when we go home today, we will go back home, and in our cribs, we will make the small little enactments, right? We will today move those kings. We will move them, and we will place them. Or sometimes you also hear of these enactments that take place, for example, yesterday, say in the villages in Reishmagos, in Shandor, or in Kansauli. We see these enactments of the kings. And sometimes we think that this feast is about the three kings, when really speaking, the feast is about Christ. And this is something that we should never forget in our encounter, that it is about Christ. On this note, for example, that we sometimes, of about how we focus on the, on the Magi or sometimes on the wise men who represent us over here in the story, in a very lighter way, there is this anecdote of the three wise women, of a woman who once went to a parish priest and asked, he says, he says Father, he says, 
Uh, do you probably know why, why God gave the star to the wise men? And the Paris priest, like me probably also, he says, not certainly, I do not know. I do not know why was a star given to them. And then the woman tells him, God knows that men are too proud to ask for directions. And then the parish priest laughs, and then he says, yeah, men are too proud. And, the, and then the woman insists. He says, no, no. He says, if the women were there, they would have asked for directions. They would have reached early to the crib. They would have helped clean the crib. They would have helped deliver Christ Jesus. They would have probably made food for him. And they would have got more practical gifts. So this is in the light of aid, of course. The, the, the point over here is not to say that, is not to, uh, to engage in the battle of the sexes, but to say, to use our gift of imagination and reason to also understand that it was not just wise men, but there were also wise women in the countryside in the time that Jesus' manifestation took place, that a lot of other people also encountered him. It was a manifestation that did not only necessarily take place with these three wise men, but people also who went and met Jesus at the crib, in his crib. It, it is about that. It is about people who come and try to encounter him. That is also sometimes scripture, scripture scholars also say, for example, that this term, majoy, which is used in the, in the scripture, is not exclusive of only men. It is also a gender-inclusive term that could also include women in them. And so you could also understand it this way. And also in a way that you also have this Jewish tradition of women who personify wisdom. And you also have the story of Sheba. You have women in the gospel also who in their quest for wisdom who go and also bring, for example, Queen Sheba, she brings gold and frankincense also for, as, as an offering. And therefore you have this very rich tradition of the Israelites who also were where wisdom is also personified through a woman. And what we are trying to say over here is that in this gospel enactment, in this gospel story, that Christ appears, manifests to everyone, to each one of us, no matter who. It is we, with ourselves, who come and encounter Christ. We bring ourselves to Christ, and we encounter him, and we take him home. For our reflection, we could look in terms of what would be our reflection, what would be our reaction in this encounter with Christ. For example, today's narratives, we could just look at this in three different reactions that took place on the news of Christ, of the coming of Christ. The first group who reacted, say for example, was King Herod. You had this one class of people like King Herod who wanted to exterminate Christ, who wanted to do away with Christ. And that is one of the most negative parts of the, of the gospel, of, of the reactions. Hopefully, we do not belong to this group. Hopefully, we do not belong to this group. We might not say that we want to kill Christ, but through our witnessing of Christ, do you think it is possible that sometimes we exterminate Christ? Or do you think to our living in our daily lives, to our witness of him, do you think that Christ becomes absent from our witnessing? That is a question that we can probably ask ourselves. The second uh, group over here was the scribes and the Pharisees, who through their knowledge knew about Christ and yet chose to ignore him, who were probably proud that they should be the ones to discover him and therefore keep others away from discovering Christ. Are we one of those probably that we can ask maybe of that group who chooses to conveniently ignore Christ? We know the teachings of Christ, we know the mission of Christ, we know what Christ teaches us because we come to church, and yet, when we go out, we probably conveniently forget. And then you have the third group. The third group are the Magi, whom we are asked today to follow, models, who had this desire, first of all, primarily had this desire for Christ. And that's the reason that makes them go on a search, a primary requirement of faith, desire. They come, they encounter Christ, they're enriched, and then they take away. A very important point also over here is to see a faith that is also then matched by reason, that the Magi just did not take Christ, but they also used their intellect. They chose not to listen to their political masters, right, of Herod telling them 
had their political master tell them, come, so that I might also come and worship Christ. But along with their faith, they were also able to use their reason. They were able to choose with their minds. They were able to be attentive to their political social realities and to be able to make their own decisions about how they want to proclaim Christ. And this, in a way, becomes models for us today, the Magi, becomes role models for us in terms of how we could choose to encounter Christ. We pray for this grace, my dear sisters and brothers today, that in our encounter of Christ, we might come to desire Him, we might come to love Him, and we might come to follow Him in our daily lives like the wise Magi. Amen. Kindly rise. Let us profess our faith. I believe, I in, believe God, in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in, and in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, our Lord, Lord who, was who was conceived by the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring forth our prayer to the Lord. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Kindly repeat, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church, that she may continue to be a guiding light for all nations, spreading the message of Christ's love and salvation, we pray to the Lord, response, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Our prayer. For world leaders and politicians, that they may seek justice, peace, and solidarity among nations, inspired by the example of Magi, who fought gifts of goodwill, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are searching for meaning and purpose in their lives, that they may encounter the light of Christ and be drawn closer to the truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For families and communities, that the spirit of unity and understanding may prevail among them, fostering love and compassion in their midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For our parish community, that we may be an example of faith, welcoming all who seek the light of Christ, and may our actions reflect the love we receive from the divine epiphany. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us bring forth our personal prayer to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to listen to our prayer. And if it is so pleasing to you, we ask you to grant it to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the offertory, let us take hymn number 137 on page 38.
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy, his holy church. Let us pray. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them we up to the, the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they might become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Neri, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, and your faithful people throughout the world. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy, will thy will be done, on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from all evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, for the, power kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Lamb of, Lamb God, of God, who take, take away the sins of the world, world have mercy on, on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. For communion, please take hymn number 147 on page 42. Right to 
kindly rise. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can you sit? I thank my brothers and sisters who have helped us to organize liturgy for this Mass and also the choir. Today is the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord, Mass is high as usual. 13 January, Saturday, anticipated Sunday Mass at 6 p.m. Liturgy will be conducted by Zone Number 1. Leaders are Joachim Fernandes and Vera Menegis. 14 January is the second Sunday of the ordinary time. Masses will be as usual. First Mass at 7 a.m. in Konkani. Liturgy by Zone Number 2. Leaders are, leader is Clara Norton. 8.15 Mass is in English. Zone number 3 and 4. Leaders are Nelson Fernandez, Criselda Rodriguez, Analda Ducarmo, Runa Agarwal. 9.30 Mass is for Catechism children and for their parents. 10.30 Mass is in Portuguese. 5.30 PM Mass in Konkani. Liturgy will be organized by Zone number 5. Leaders are Berta Fernandez, Luciano Mendes. Catechism classes have resumed from today. The First Holy Communion in our parish will be on 11th February at 9.30 a.m. Members of Society of St. Vincent de Paul will be standing outside the church after every Mass for collection of alms. Kindly contribute generously. Last Sunday's collection is amounted to rupees 32,810. Thank you and God bless you. Kindly rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Kindly pray for God's blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Hymn nice number day. 258 on page 81. Baby. 